and hello forever family. My name is Shannon. I'm the recovery pastor. So I want to talk to you today about the blind spots on life's highway. I was online and reading articles and trying to expand my perspective on many different things. And I ran across a pastor named Tom Pennington. And he had asked his congregation a simple question. What is it that everyone has that we can clearly see in others, but not in ourselves? So after many of them had some great answers, he said the answer is blind spots. He goes on to say that blind spots for Christians manifest themselves in many different ways, such as if our walk doesn't match our talk, or if our motives of doing something becomes self-exalting rather than God-glorifying. So let's clearly define what a blind spot is. These are the areas on the road that we cannot see whether we are looking forward or looking through a mirror. That's our blind spots. Now we all know every car has a blind spot. There are mirrors, yes, we can adjust them, but even the mirrors have disclaimers. The disclaimers say objects may appear closer or objects may appear farther away. In other words, really look at your surroundings. Don't rely on the perspective of the mirrors to assume you have clearance. You know, I think that's how we do life with each other. We look through our own perspective and we assume or we look through the perspective of someone else and assume that we have clearance to move or to do something or say something. And even 18-wheelers, they have pictures and little diagrams on their, their back doors. And they say, if you are traveling in this area of my truck, I cannot see you. You're in a blind spot. So that disclaimer basically says, if I can't see you, then the responsibility shifts to you. It is your responsibility to know that you're in my blind spot and that I can't see you if I need to move. I think that's very symbolic because we have to share life's highway. We're on this journey together. Even though we're at different stages, going at different rates, we are still in this journey together. So even though our mirrors can be adjusted to accommodate us, they are still so limited. Now, you can't find the term blind spot in the Bible, but the principle behind it can be found. Scripture speaks of actions that impact, impact us or the others around us in a negative way. So blind spots are anything that brings a negative impact to us. Just like how a car wreck is, is a negative impact in our recovery walk, this is our character defects. This is our hurts, habits, and hang-ups. It, um, you know, just like a, a car goes down the road at a, at a rate or a speed, the blind spots spiritually are also, maybe it's the rate of dysfunctional normal that we're traveling on life's highway. We may do things that seem quite normal and reasonable and sensible to us, but to someone else, they may look at us and go, how in the world are they functioning? How are they doing that? Because our perspectives and our past experiences are different. So let's talk about how we can stay in the lane that God created for us while keeping a watch on our blind spots. So sin is where our blind spots are found. Just like the mirrors have disclaimers about the objects being closer or further away, I think we've all heard, I know I've heard, if you play with fire, you get burned. We can't dabble or play in sin while, well, I think the most recent way I've, I've seen this and heard this is we can't spew hate while we worship God. We can't do it. So to dabble or to play in sin is kind of like driving down life's highway blindfolded. The whole world becomes one big blind spot. Now, I know that all of us, we, we're falling short, we're sinners in our flesh, and we'll excuse away our sin in a heartbeat to try to minimize our negative impact on this world. But this is the thing. To God, sin is sin. This isn't nothing new. That's not anything that's like news-breaking worthy. Sin is sin. We all know that. Scripture does not 
say one sin is, is worse than the other as far as the different commandments. I think the biggest one is blasphemy. But we will take any small little thing that adds to the big picture of sin and we'll excuse it away. That's how we dabble. That's how we play. I mean, even in Matthew 15, you know, Jesus talking to the scribes and the Pharisees who were, you know, the better than thou attitudes. But Jesus called them the blind gods of the blind. You can't dabble in a blind spot. And just like many of us have been passengers in a car, I don't know about you, but when I pull up to a stop sign and somebody else is driving, I'm looking out my mirror. I mean, I'm, I'm looking out my window. I want to make sure there's nothing coming in on my side of the car. Now, I don't want the car in a wreck, but I definitely don't want it on my side of the car. So in our faith, in our recovery, this is where our support systems are so critical. They can help us spiritually watch and make sure that, that our, our vessel is not going to be hit by a spiritual car wreck. So I want to break down a couple of examples of um, blind spots. And we're actually going to look at these from uh, the time of Moses. So the first one is, you know, Pharaoh was very stubborn and very resistant to the words of Moses. We must not be so stubborn that we just have to be known as right, no matter what. We must not be blinded by denial of another person's perspective. Just because we didn't experience what they did doesn't mean it didn't happen to them. We must become willing to make a change. So in recovery, this means change playmates and playgrounds. In faith, this means having a heart change, a really big change of heart, how we treat others, how we view others. And this is done by letting Jesus come in. This is where we have a face-to-face -face or a heart-to-heart -heart with Jesus. So the next one, you know, Pharaoh had that attitude that he was a god. Now, it's a little g-god, but to him... He was the God. Um, you know, we, we must resist being so arrogant due to entitlements. We must resist being blinded by selfish motivations. We need to humble our hearts. And in recovery, this means really listen to someone that says we've hurt them. We may not understand. We may not even remember what the event was. But their hurt is real. Their hurt is valid because they experienced it. Now, in faith, we got to let go of those worldly titles. When we leave this world, our vessel returns to, to dust. Nobody's dust is better than the other ones. We're all going to be dust. So the next one, the third one. Every time God would tell Moses to do something, whether it was his staff, you know, turning into a snake or um, he would reach his hand into his cloak and pull it out and it would be covered with leprosy. Pharaoh had uh, mag uh, magicians and they would try to do every so-called trick that God was doing through Moses. Because if they could do that, then Pharaoh could justify that he was still God. He could have all that stuff done too. When they achieved each one, Moses was, um, I'm sorry, Pharaoh was able to justify his resentment towards Moses standing in his presence. Even though he'd been raised in the, in the Pharaoh's palace, he was simply a Hebrew in the eyes of that so-called little G-God at this point. So his resentment was justified. It was validated. We must not become blind to bitterness and resentment. We need to acknowledge our wrongs. We need to offer forgiveness and ask for forgiveness. Now, when we ask for forgiveness, someone may not be ready to give it. That's okay. We still need to listen to their hurt, understand it, receive their words, but we still need to ask for it. Sometimes this means us offering forgiveness for an apology we will never get. We have to give that forgiveness because if we don't, if we hold resentment 
and I know you've heard this before, it's like us drinking poison and hoping they will get sick or die. It just eats you alive, nobody else. Whatever it is that you hold on to, whatever hurt you are harboring, will only do you harm, not that other person. So the fourth one. You know, Pharaoh would dismiss anyone that he didn't agree with. I mean, he, he controlled Egypt. He was Egypt. He would just cut ties. We must not allow ourselves to isolate just to pout. We must not burn bridges just to save our own pride. And we must not become blind through detachment. we got to have those hard conversations. We've got to sit down, hear the words. And I mean really hear the words. Don't just sit there and the whole time that person's speaking, think of everything you're going to just throw right back at them. No. Hear the words. When they finish talking, just sit there for a minute. Absorb it. Really think about what they just said to you. You must allow each other to be heard. So many times I can see somebody's face when they're listening to somebody and this other person's crying their eyes out. But this second person, there's not an ounce of empathy or hurt. They're not feeling any of the words because they're not receiving them. They're processing what they're about to throw back at them verbally. We also must stay connected to our support communities. You know, after we have those hard conversations, we need to come in and sit down and talk to our support communities and talk through what happened. Let them give us a new perspective. There may be something about the conversation that jumps out at them that expresses the hurt that we're just not hearing or we're not receiving. And then finally, you know, with Pharaoh, it was his way or no way. He just was so willingly ignorant to the things being achieved in other ways. So, you know, in Egypt, if they didn't like something that happened in history, they just went out there and literally scraped it off the face of the stones and rewrote history. It's crazy how, oh, I don't like how this is done. I'll just rewrite it. We have to learn from history. If we don't, it's going to repeat itself. And if we don't teach future generations about the good, the bad, and just the pure ugliness, then we're setting them up for a downfall. I really feel like we are. So we must not become blind through disobedience. Because I really feel like when we want everything to be our way, that is such a disobedience because we are to be living in God's will, not our will. Uh, we also, you know, we need to we need to stop showing up and checking off a list. Okay, I went to my recovery meeting. Check. I got a chip. Check. I got a court stamp. Check. They saw me in church today. Check. Uh, I went and visited whoever it is that I really don't like to be around. Check. That's not life. That's not doing life with each other. If we align our hearts with the will of God through being obedient to His calling on our life, so many blessings will pour out. Scripture tells us that if we humble ourselves before the Lord, He will lift us up. The world can't lift us up. The world only wants to keep us enslaved to sin. So in recovery, think about it like this. Your accountability partners, that's your side mirrors. They help us see the areas where we have very limited sight. Our sponsors, that's our rear view mirror. They help us understand what happened in the past. They help us unfold and unpack that spiritual, mental, emotional baggage so that we don't keep re repeating the same cycles. But they also, as we look forward, they've already been down this journey of life's highway. This section of the highway they've already been through. So they can tell us how to navigate the potholes that the enemy has set up trying to make us fall down. They help us successfully dodge all of the traps as we go down life's highway. So I have a question for you. 
Do you feel like you've been in a spiritual wreck, a spiritual car wreck, like you are just aching from head to toe because you hurt? I know a great, a great repair shop. I know a great mechanic. I know someone who can restore, redeem, and bring the value back into so many outlets of our life that we've we kind of let die because we've been in that spiritual wreck so long that we just disconnected, detached, or allowed our pride to keep us from making progress. Do you feel like you've been in a spiritual wreck? I would love to hear from you. Until next time, this has been The Blind Spots in Life's Highway. So remember to speak life, be a blessing, put your faith feet into action to cause a ripple effect. Until next time, much God for everybody.